Hey, cadets, welcome back to MS200. Uh, we're talking about MA analysis right now. And I want to give you some slides talking through how to use the battle book in your enemy analysis. All right, so the first battle book slide we have here is uh, laying out our general situation and our disposition, all right? So there's some space on the on the note card here for the battle book that you could write out some, some reminders of what you want to talk about. But really, uh, this is pointing to the things you're going to put down graphically on the map or on your sand table. So while you're briefing them, you're pointing to those spots. All right, here's the disposition. There is a squad located in the village. There is another uh, squad that is having a screen along a possible avenue of approach, uh, a fire team on a bridge, things like that, and point them out on the maps, all right? When we talk disposition, you also want to um, talk about your higher and lower situation, right? So not just your platoon's mission and your platoon's enemy, but give some context to it that, hey, our battalion is fighting against this enemy force in our larger battalion AO, and maybe what's been going on with them. And then uh, in our company AO, here's what's going on. And there's, you know, a squad over in first platoon sector and a squad in second platoon. So just a general overview. And then you can deep dive into your platoon's disposition of how you actually think the enemy is arraying its forces that you're going to fight. All right, the next slide here is labeled enemy line wire diagram. It really it's a way to talk about our specific enemy and get at their composition and their strength of who we're facing. So we start out with just a line wire diagram, task org, along with their key weapon systems and tasks and purposes, just like we do it on the friendly side. All right, so here we've got our enemy squad, its fire teams, their tasks and purposes. We've got a bit of a mad lib fill in the blank here. So the enemy squad that we're facing is expected to be at 100% strength with 12 personnel. And you can change that for whatever um, it happens to be that you're facing. And then we get this table that we can fill in about those key weapon systems, give us some more information about the enemy capabilities. So we start off with what are the organic weapon systems we're worried about? Hey, they got an RP, two RPKs and two RPG-7s. All right, we can put some symbols there to remind us what they are later. Um, and so visually, someone just looking at it real quick without reading can see, oh, those are the things they've got. Uh, and then we can put down the ranges, um, give us an idea what they, they function at. And then some U.S. equivalents. So if we've got some younger soldiers, we've got to work with um, some idea of what we're talking about. Like, uh, what's this RPG-7 thing? Oh, that's like a, an anti-tank kind of missile rockety looking thing. All right, so they get that, right? It's an AT-4. All right, and then attached weapons. Hey, this enemy's got a 60 millimeter mortar attached to them. All right, that brings along with it two personnel. It's going to add to the size of their force uh, with that one weapon system. It's got a pretty good range there. And then higher headquarters things is what asset does the higher headquarters have that they could choose to give that enemy right so we know that we're looking at an enemy squad we might have an idea of how the three squads in the enemy platoon are arrayed company commander gave us some disposition information on that um, so we know we're facing a squad our, our partners on the left and right know they're facing squads but that whole thing was a platoon so where did they put their two pkms where are those heavy machine gun those medium and heavy machine guns at that we have to deal with um, so we capture the fact that higher headquarters has those. They could be in our sector. We'll have to do some analysis to think about that. All right. And then they've also got an SVD uh, sniper rifle out here. Uh, all right. Now, when we're looking at these enemy capabilities about their weapon systems, right, got to have some idea what are those ranges on the weapon systems? When can they engage us? When can't they? And what kind of support enablers do they have? So we can bring in this, this kind of table um, that I'll give you here to, to key in on some of the small arms, right? So we can talk about the AK-47, their basic rifle. Uh, a GP-30 is a grenade launcher, just like our M203. The RPK, uh, light machine gun, squad automatic weapon style. PKM, medium machine gun, 762, uh, kind of our 240 Bravo. An RPG-7 is a rocket launcher. Um, anti-tank type system, and then the Dishka heavy machine gun, equivalent of our uh, 50 cal M2. All right, the third slide in the battle book is enemy capabilities by warfighting function. It's a table, all right? It's already got the six warfighting functions there. We're just looking for a description, what that capability is that they can make use of it, and then a deduction, the so what. What is it going to impact on our mission, just like we did in the terrain analysis table? So an example here, uh, Intel, hey, description. They've got LPOPs and they've got a Schmel 1, which is a UAV system, all right? Capability, that gives them an early warning capability, all right? 
deductions from that. Enemy's gonna have knowledge of our formations. They could use fires on us once we're in range and they could use, uh, we need to use dispersion and proper movement techniques so we avoid getting targeted. All right, those are good, clear, succinct, short deductions that go along with that. All right, movement maneuver, right? They've got mounted and dismounted movement forces and they've got hind D support, all right? What does that give them a capability of? It gives them the ability to concentrate their forces and to get reinforcements, okay? Which means they're, we think they're likely to concentrate forces on key terrain, things they wanna retain, all right? And then they'll be able to avoid dispersing the forces, all right? And then that high D, man, that gives them a possibility to get support from the air. Uh, but we think that that's primarily gonna be focused on motorized and mechanized formations. So if we were one of those motorized or mechanized forces, we might be a priority target. If we were dismounted infantry walking around, yeah, they got hind D support, but that hind D is going to get prioritized against something else, and we're kind of low on the list, unless we're the biggest thing in town, right? All right, fires, 82 millimeter mortar. What's the capability for that? They can disrupt, all right? So they got their 82 millimeter mortars, and deduction with that, they got FM comms to go with it. They need both those things. We think they got both those things, and we think there's a two to three minute response time for fires on troops in the open like us, so we got to maintain proper dispersion. All right, protection. They have a lack of reinforcing obstacles, right? If we knew that description about them, okay? Which is lack of capability, right? So we could also say, hey, they here's the deduction. They've not been in sector for longer than 24 hours. They've been there less than 24 hours. So it's not very likely they've had a lot of time to prepare and put in reinforcing obstacles. So we're not expecting them to be there. All right, good deduction. All right, sustainment. Hey, uh, they've got secure lines of communication behind them. All right, which means the capability is they have continuous sustainment, all right, which means that they're going to have sustainment for that 24 to 48 hours of the operation, right? We think that they can manage that. They can stockpile material. They can get stuff there, and they can stuff get stuff back to them if they need it, all right? Mission command, we know that they've got both FM radio and cell phone capabilities, right? What capabilities does that bring? Synchronization, all right? They can synchronize their forces even though they might be geographically dispersed. LPOPs will be able to provide early warning and then maneuver elements are going to be able to coordinate with other maneuver elements and move in from different directions and, and synchronize their uh, capabilities and their fires on us. <clears throat> All right, the last slide here in the battle book for the enemy portion is uh, laying out that most likely course of action. That's the real key thing. And then you could get talk about a most dangerous course of action. All right, now for y'all, that's coming soon. We're gonna talk about that in an upcoming lesson, um, but just this portion of the battle book is a spot to capture it. We'll talk about how to do that uh, coming up soon. All right, this last slide I wanna give you here. Um, I know it's a bit busy, so when I'm done talking, you can pause it. You can come back to the slide and look at it a little bit closer, but really just how do you brief this enemy analysis, all right? And how you talk through this when you give your operations order, all right? And you can see this little funnel here, right? So we're starting with big, broad picture general disposition, two levels up, one level up, what's going on in the battle space and what's going on with the enemy. All right, and then we can narrow that down into dispositions about, all right, where are they, not just generally, but where specifically do we know that forces are <clears throat> in the battle space and the people that we're gonna be fighting at and who might be in our area of interest to affect us, which then narrows down a little bit more into the composition all right, so then we get into these other, the next couple of those other slides talking about the composition of who we're gonna fight. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What capabilities do they bring? And we go through that by war fighting function. And then that narrows all the way down to our, our thoughts on the concept of the enemy plan, right? What is the most likely course of action they're gonna take? All right, so all those things funnel down into what's the most likely thing that the enemy's gonna do to us, all right? So you can go ahead and pause this video and look through the rest of that slide if, uh, you get more information about it. it's just ideas on how to brief it and what kinds of things we're trying to talk about all right so that was a little bit of a walkthrough on the slides for the battle book that are covered in in this lesson that go along with enemy analysis um, hope you find it helpful and refer back to this when you're working on your final op order uh, so you can give a good brief out all right have a great day